let's do Microsoft. Look at this. We have the wave. Higher high, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. What is happening now? The wave is beginning to take place. I would rather trade this stock than the other one. Now, yes, it's down today, $2, you know, that's okay. Again, we're gonna have pullbacks. Just if you if you even look at this right here, did we not have pullbacks here? Yes, we have pullbacks here. It struggled. Even look at these right here. But the thing is, when the wave began, what happened? The stock goes up. Now, here's the other beautiful thing about this is what I like about when the stock goes dips and the wave begins, right? Again, we're not buying the dips, we bind the we're catching the wave. Almost more than likely. Okay, unless something abnormal happens that is beyond our control and everything, because the definition of an uptrend is higher highs and higher lows, then that means that if this wave, we catch this wave, what is it supposed to do by definition? It's supposed to do what form a higher high. Does that make sense? So if it's supposed to form a higher high, then that means that this right here is a level that I expect it to get to. Okay, you bought to open at 275. Is that what you mean? Uh, breakout, breakout of 200. Is that, I'm not sure what B slash O stands for. Breakout, okay, thank you for that. Yeah, so exactly. So we're expecting it to break out at 275. Or we can say, get in now that we know that the wave has happened and expect it to do what? The first target is 275. Does that make sense? And so now we look at this, say, if I buy this stock at 263 and 275 is where we expect it to go, that is a $12 difference on $263. So now the question becomes, is that good enough for us? Do you like that type of return? What's the return on that? $12 of 263, what's that? Let me see if I can get this. $12 divided by 263. That's a 4%, 4.5% return. Now you might look at that and say, okay, yeah, I don't like 4.5%. Well, if you have margins, you know, you can double that, triple that, maybe even quadruple that. You know, if you have a four for one margin, 4.5% return is 16%, you know, maybe almost 20%. If you are trading options on this, then that's even better. Now, some people will say, hey, I'll go over here and buy the 275 option. I don't like to do that personally. I mean, because you always have to factor in for the risk factor, right? Or call it a fear factor. The risk factor, fear factor, I always like to factor that in. And so the way I like to do it is either I buy at the money options. Oh, come on. What is wrong with my mouse today? I'm just glad my internet is not having issues. Poor Adrian, the speaker earlier, he was having issues with uh, his uh, internet. Mine is my mouse. So I either buy at the money or I go back here because I say, look, where do I expect price not come down to? I don't expect price to come down to this level here. I should be safe. This is a safe haven spot right here. So somewhere around 245 in the money, deep in the money. Let me see what the options will look like on this. Deep in the money options, 254, uh, 245, sorry. The question now becomes, well, what's your expiration? Okay, and that's, that's what gets a lot of people in trouble. I would say, you know, for what I do, 90 days minimum is what I look for, 90 days minimum. So if I'm looking at this, we said 245 in, uh, in the money right here. So you look at like this, it's like, hey, that's too expensive. You know, that's at least, what, 20, almost $3,000 per contract that you got to spend. The confidence I have is at least that $3,000, I'm not going to lose it all because there will be plenty of information that would tell me what I need to sell this before it gets too much. I mean, like even like one of, one of the things like at 50% automatic stop loss, automatic stop loss of 50%. Okay, so I know that if I get this at $3,000, $3, then 1,500, I'm walking away, no matter what. This, I don't care what happens. No matter what, I'm taking my 1,500 call in the day. I'm not trying to lose my whole 3,000, okay? But we can also have more management rules in place to prevent it from even getting that low, first and foremost, okay? But the second thing is at, at this price right here, when I go back to the chart, I'm not expecting to come down to this level. It should not come down to this level. Why should it not come down to this level? Because we're dealing with an uptrend.
And if it gets to my 275, um, 275 will be here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So if we do seven, so my 3,000 will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my $3,000 would turn into almost six grand by the time it gets to that 275. That's just rough estimates, by the way. Okay. Rough estimates. Just give me an idea of what I'm dealing with here. So that's how I would, I would look at that. But I would feel more confident with a stock like this than I would go X, Y. Fair enough. If you don't remember anything else from what I've said today, just remember, don't buy dips, catch the wave. Don't buy the dip. Instead, catch the wave. You would do a whole lot better if you learn to catch the wave. I have a platform that I use to kind of also help me determine that we are catching the wave. This is the right side platform. I'll just go over very briefly. I use this after I've seen the analysis that we've done there. I said, okay, yeah, am I catching the wave? One of the biggest things, let me use Microsoft because we we're just talking about Microsoft. Here's Microsoft. Here's a daily chart of Microsoft. One of the things that we have is first is this green background and then this red background. You can see this green and red background. What this tells me is whether the trend is bullish or bearish. That's kind of like what it's doing. So it's factoring in all this stuff that I talked about, making sure we look at the structure, we look at uptrend, downtrend, blah, 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 blah. And then it's letting us know, you know, there's a new trend. And so the other way you can look at this is this is the wave. So this green is the wave, okay? So we have this right here, this green right now, this is end of day's data from yesterday tells me, wow, something, we, a wave is coming, a wave is coming. So the question now becomes, should we catch that wave or not, okay? And so what you'll see here is when this first happened, and you remember how I said there were people in California sitting in some waves that caught others, they did not? Well, here's an example of, this looks like the wave was beginning to happen, but the wave wasn't strong enough. And the reason why I know the wave wasn't strong enough because the platform over here then said, long stop, exit short. So what this is telling us is it's not a buy signal yet. It's just saying, look, make sure that if you're long on this, have stops in place. The reason why I'm saying this is because it's still weak. There's not enough data to tell us, yes, this thing is strong enough, right? And then what happened the next day is a long stop exit. So at this point, you should have been stopped out if you had your stops in place. Well, if you didn't have stops in place there, right there, it's telling you again, make sure you have your stops in place. And then right here, notice what it's saying. It says, look, exit your long positions. That's what this is saying, okay? Then we come over here, and then now things turn from red to green. But the difference between this time around versus this one was where it says long stop exit short. This one is saying, buy cover. What this buy cover is saying is buy whatever you want to buy, but you also, if you shorten the stock, cover your short, mean exit, meaning exit your short positions. Matter of fact, let me show you guys that this is the terminologies that we use for this platform. We call it the right model, okay? That's what we call it, the right model, but this is the terminologies. The buy cover means that it's time to buy the stock and go long and cover any existing short positions that you have. The other one we saw Early was this right here, long stop exit short. It says time to place a stop on any long positions or exit it and uh, or exit uh, cover any short positions. Okay, that's what that was saying here. So in this case, we're looking at this and now it's saying buy cover. This tells me that the wave is strong. Okay, the wave is strong enough. And now we just have to see how far is it going to take us. Now, we already made a target just by visually looking at it when I talked about it saying, hey, we should take out this high, okay? So then we added another component to this, which is this harp line. What this harp line kind of gives us is like saying, hey, we know that this stock is in an uptrend. We can see that because it goes from the bottom to the top, from the bottom, and now that it's coming up, where can we expect it to go? We were anticipating 275. That's where we expected it to go. That's the minimum I expect it to do. But then I come and I look at this harp line because the harp line, the peak of this harp line right here also gives us an idea of where it expects it to go based on a lot of data that has been happening uh, and, 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 and flowing into this particular stock. So when I look at this now, I say, hey, this stock can go anywhere from 275 approximately 
to about 285. That's where I can expect this stock to go, 275 to 285. And that's my analysis there, okay? We said 90 days of retrading options just for so many different reasons. But if you wanted to be kind of like getting an, a, a better idea of how long it takes, I would say look at, you know, if we were to extend this line down and we start here, you can go back in time and just get a rough estimate. How long did it take from this candlestick here to this candlestick up here? How long did it take from this candlestick up here to come all the way down to this bottom right here? If you count those, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 candles to get to the top. And then we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, there was 20 candles to come down, 16 candles to go up. Now, those are trading days. Don't count the weekends or non uh, or holidays, okay? But if you look at this, so anywhere from 16 to 20 trading days is the expectations now that we can have to say Microsoft should reach anywhere from 275 to 285 over the next 16 to 20 trading days. But even though it's only saying 16 to 20 trading days, which is really about a month, right? I'm still going 90 days for just that risk factor. My goal is to be out of that trade before the last 30 days of the expiration, especially if I'm buying. If, you, if you're doing other, you know, uh, multi-layered type of um, option strategies, that's different. But I'm just talking about if you were just strictly buying call options or buying put options. Does that make sense? All right, one of the good factors that I like with this platform, I hope you guys like this too, is that I look at seasonality charts. And one of the cool things about seasonality, which is something a lot of people don't pay attention to, which blows my mind why they don't, is it gives us an idea for when we can expect things to start moving, okay? So here's the last 10 years of Microsoft based on seasonality. And you can see that it says it kind of goes, you know, downwards and then somewhere around here, right about here. And this line right here is today, okay? So we can see here that this line right here, which is today or at least yesterday's candle, right? Uh, actually on the 14th. Uh, if we look right here, this is a somewhere around here, which coincides with this bottom right here is when we can start expecting price to go higher. Over the last 10 years, somewhere around middle of March, beginning of March, and somewhere in the month of March, Microsoft has a tendency of bottoming out and then going higher. It's like, hmm, very interesting, okay? Then I come over here and I put this future seasonality scan. And what I'm asking it to do is saying, hey, from now and on to the next six months, when is the most consistent rally? take place for Microsoft? And when is the most consistent drop take place? Keyword is most consistent. I'm not looking for, that, for the most profitable. I'm looking at for the most consistent. And the reason why is because I like consistency, okay? I don't necessarily like most profitable because if you look at GameStop in 2021, that was one of its most profitable. If you try to use that information and try to do the same thing in 2022, you will be sorely <laughs> you know, mistaken. So I don't necessarily care so much for the most profitable, but the most consistent, because if it's most consistent, even if it's only 5%, I at least know, okay, I can aim for 5% and that's realistic. Does that make sense? And so here I can look at this now, let me take this off. And this information is telling me, it's telling me that, hey, in the last 10 years, see this number right here, 10 slash O, that means that Microsoft is always, always gone up in the month of March. You mean during the pandemic? Yes, it went up in the month of March. So if this is happening and the average is 5%, don't get too carried away by the 5%. The thing is, it's consistent. We can leverage that with margins. We can leverage that with options. We can do all that stuff, but, or we can just even set our goals. So, hey, 5%, I can make 5% in the next month on Microsoft. But knowing that this is about to happen. So the only question, 
which is one of the biggest things that most people have when it comes to seasonality is like, how do we know what's going to happen this year? Which takes us back to the chart now. And this whole right model was created for that. And I know that right around the time that the stock is supposed to go higher, if we start seeing buy signal, that means that we're catching the wave. The wave is strong enough. And it's happening right around the season when we expect the tides to rise. Ladies and gentlemen, I look at stuff like this and I don't even question it. The only question I have would be, how do I want to trade this? Do I just want to buy the stock? Do I want to leverage it with options? Or do I just want to use margins? But at the end of the day, a 5% move is what we expect. And then we just do the calculation right there. We say if $12 on 270, uh, on 270, a 260, a $12 move from 263 is about 4.5%. Is it coincidence? that this is happening to Microsoft right about the time where every single year in the month of March, for whatever the reason is, I don't know what this season thing is, where maybe they're selling more chips, maybe they're signing more contracts. I don't know what the reason is, but Microsoft has a track record of going higher in the month of March. Why would we not want to pay attention to that? And now with the tools that we have, the platform telling us, yep, it's, you definitely want to start catching this wave now. It tells me the seasonality in Microsoft is kicking in. Okay. So I hope that helps. We have, I mean, I, I, I wanted to show you some other stocks. Um, let, me, let me show you this one right here real quick and I'll end with this. This is one that we also know has a seasonal pattern, uh, Conagra Foods. You see right here, somewhere around here is when it's supposed to start as well. Um, we were looking at this and saying at the beginning of March, somewhere between the beginning of March and right about now is where it tends to bottom, but we weren't sure which one was going to happen. Here's the benefit of this. At the beginning of March, I want to show you guys this. This was the beginning of March right here. When the beginning of March came, notice what happened. We didn't have a buy signal. We didn't have, you know, it was turning green, which kind of like when this first started turning green, we said, oh, wow, great. The, the tide is beginning to turn. The tide is beginning to turn. The tide is beginning to turn. We're about to catch a wave, right? But then we needed that buy signal. But instead, notice what it did. On February 23rd, it gave us a get in short or get out. Um, February 24th, get in short and get out. Say, hey, wh wh where's the buy signal? You know, uh, February 27th, get in short or get out. And it just never get it. It never gave us that. It said, look, don't jump on this wave yet. It looks like a wave, but don't jump on it yet. And that's the beauty of what we've created with this platform to kind of help us say, look, even though we know seasonality could bottom out somewhere at the beginning of March to mid-March, we just need to know the timing. Whereas before, I would have just blindly started buying at the beginning of March and holding and hoping that things would turn around. Now I don't have to do that anymore, okay? Because now I can see, oh, I know it's supposed to go up somewhere between March 1st and March 14th. Okay, fine. I come here March 1st, uh, towards the first beginning of March 1st, nothing happened. March 1st comes and it's saying, look, sell short. I say, well, it's supposed to be going higher. So why is it going down? If this was one of those situations where this year it's not going to do it, well, then great. I would have saved myself from jumping into a seasonal stock that was not going to work out this year. But notice what's happening now. Things are beginning to turn, right? And what does it now tell you? See, this red background is talking to the bears. And what is it telling the bears right now? get insured or get out. Why is it telling the bears to get insured or get out of your bearish positions? Maybe because the tide is about to get ready to start heading higher. We can come over here to the seasonality factor here. We can see, hey, this thing tends to start heading higher with the most consistent rally taking place at the end of March. But here's where now we need to start paying attention because anytime between now and March 28th, if this thing starts giving us a buy signal, we know the seasonality is kicking in. Now look at this stock. In the last 10 years, never failed to go higher in the month of March for an average of 8%, even better than Microsoft. Better than Microsoft, okay? So it's a whole lot more um, that this platform can do, but my time is running out. So here's what I wanna do. Anybody who's interested in getting this, I'm going to put my 
link here, right side trading.com forward slash 